uh, I filmed in Mississippi at um, a, a women's clinic there, and there were protesters outside, and many were very respectful, um, kneeling, singing, praying, but still harassing the women who were coming in for services. But there was one man who was extremely aggressive, and um, the doctor that we were profiling, you know, at the end of the day, we decided that that wasn't the story we were telling, we were focusing on Tammy, but we had two cameras, one on either side of this fence that divided them, and, and so we were able to cut and capture it, and it's really quite terrifying how he was um, screaming at this provider who happens to be black, and he was telling him he was guilty of genocide, and, uh, and this was a white man screaming this to him, and it was, he followed him all the way down at the fence, screaming at the top of his lungs, and um, it was pretty scary. I'd never quite experienced a protester that aggressive before, and he went on all the way until this physician had gotten inside of the building, and um, he really enjoyed it, too. And I think he enjoyed that he was being filmed. So to follow on that, Jacob, uh, as a doctor who, who uh, practices in the emergency room, and you deal with all kinds of patients and all kinds of issues, what are some of the things that, you might, that might be different now as a result of the pandemic, of some of these uh, issues around vaccination, abortion, the political climate that you've had to face? Sure, and I, I'd say more broadly, the real concern is if there's another pandemic or another crisis, we will never get, be able to get people to do anything because there's such skepticism, even on people with goodwill, about government authority and doctors. Um, I think the culture has really shifted. For about two months, people banged their pots and thought doctors were heroes, and now people curse out doctors and think they're agents of the state. And as the language gets more dangerous, I'm glad you mentioned the, the man accusing the providers of genocide, because if you actually do believe that, then you can make a pretty good moral argument that if you can kill a couple of people to prevent the Holocaust, you should be doing that. So it's a very natural slippery slope to active violence. And that's why I think it's perfectly reasonable to uh, respect someone's opinion to say, I think this is wrong. But the difference between I think this is wrong and I think this is mass murder is an enormous one. 